Hi, Jan. Hi. Ah, how are you? I'm good. How Welcome are you? again. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome again. Uh, I'm just uh, talking about Turkish uh, to our audience uh, okay. and talk, uh, talking about uh, your background, uh, in fact. Uh, but uh, now we are talking in English, as you see. Uh, I'd like to ask a question about some uh, question. The, as you know, uh, your your name is Jan Samuel, and it is pronounced like Jan in yes, French. Yes, Jan. 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 I see. So it's uh, an ancient name from Brittany. Uh, mm -hmm. That's a very local name very not not that, that common i see it, it is it is hard to pronounce it because as you know the french is not an easy language uh, to talk <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, but uh, we, like, we like the culture uh, french culture is so so prosperous so successful mm. yeah well yeah. in a way yeah uh, Especially, I like Rune Magritte's uh, pictures. Uh, Magritte, I think it is yeah. pronounced like this. Rune Magritte, yeah. There, there, there's a one yeah. famous uh, uh, picture. Uh, this is not a pipe, uh, I think. Uh, yes. Michel Foucault. Yes, exactly. It's very famous. Yeah, yeah. It was a, the, yeah. the very the kind of jokes the surrealists uh, did. Uh, yeah, it was. Okay. It's interesting because it questions it questions about about art um, it's uh, it's very interesting yeah 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 Magritte was uh, quite at that yeah uh, I've checked on internet uh, that uh, it is written uh, your background uh, there are some life and career it is written for example in Wikipedia uh, you went to film school and uh, you were a storyboard artist before uh, becoming well, a director. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I did. Yeah. And also, yeah. yeah. Yes, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, I uh, had this skill for drawing, so I started uh, to, to make my own living on uh, drawings and paintings, illustrations for books, covers, posters, and stuff like that, uh, comics. Uh, but I wanted to be a director, so it was just a way of earn my living and uh, waiting for this cinema to to feed me. And then yeah. I went to, to this uh, cinema school in Paris, uh, Le Conservatoire Libre du Cinéma Français, uh, which mm -hmm. I could translate as the Free French Conservatory of French Cinema which is very pompous. Um, and I did my studies there. And then, uh, then I was ready to start my career. So once you were a student, uh, and it is written so many information on internet about you. So question is this. <laughs> Who is okay. Jan, Jan Samuel? Who is? Who are you? How? Oh. Is it? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, that's that's quite a, a tough question. I wish I knew. Um, <laughs> who, who am I? Uh, I'm now. I'm the father of five children. I'm married with their mother, uh, and um, I. What are what, what? What? How could I define myself? Okay, uh, I come from. Uh, Uh, middle class family. My parents were actors. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my mother uh, is English. She's still alive. My, die, my dad uh, died uh, last year. He was an actor. Uh, this is probably one of the reasons why I was uh, attracted to, to the movie industry because I, I, I was on set and on stage quite uh, young, as a matter of fact. I'm very interesting into the acting, uh, the, the, the job of actors, I guess. So, uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, so I spend my childhood uh, most of the time in France, sometimes in England, and uh, mm -hmm. and I lived in um, 
in the middle of nowhere, absolutely nowhere. There was no neighbors, uh, like it was like five kilometers walking in, in the fields be before I, I could meet uh, anyone. So it was like absolutely nowhere. Uh, though my parents were working in Paris as actors and they were mm. like always uh, gone. So I lived with my brother on my own most of the time. That's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, that's it. Then I came to Paris uh, to study cinema and uh, that's it basically. Uh, who am I? Uh, I guess that, that's yeah, yeah, um, it's it's really a tough question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. Which one is harder, uh, being a director or being a father? Which one is uh, difficult? Uh, I think both are very rewarding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, wow, I couldn't say. It's I I I really have a passion for cinema. That's for sure. So I love it in any way, in a, any form. And I also have passion for children. So I guess uh, I ca could not say who would win the co competition between the two. I, I really enjoy being a father and being a, a director. Uh, and I see. <laughs> that's another tough question. <laughs> you've got, you've got a, a yeah. real tough question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. And also, I've got a son, uh, and uh, in in cinema, as you see, there's a one term. They said that in United States, uh, it's, it's sometimes you need to kill your baby uh, in order to create an efficient video. So you have to kill your uh, footage in order to create a good probably paradigm. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. in a way yeah. I, 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 Creating is always an act of suffering and enjoying at the same time. It's very painful and very endearing in the, at the same time. Uh, you only write or create because you've got something that is deep inside your guts. You've got to, to tell to, to the audience. So it's in a way a relief and in the same time uh, um, a trauma. I guess yeah. So. Yeah, some conflict, and then you will create your atmosphere yeah. and your film. Yeah, yeah. No pain, no gain. They said that. Is it? Is it? Oh yes. It? <laughs> yeah. to say so. Yeah. <laughs> and also, in the cinema industry, they said that writing is also rewriting and writing again, rewriting, and then you will complete your uh, script. And creating means also recreating or create something by creating again and again. Uh, yes, I guess. I, I guess we all have the same uh, things turning around in our heads, and we always. It's 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 like a spiral, you know. You yeah. mm -hmm. turn around yourself. And uh, by each time you come to the same point, but a little uh, further away from yourself each time. So I guess each time you make a movie, you go back to your own ghost, inner ghosts, but in a wider and wider way uh, every time. So it's a way of exploring ourselves, but also e e exposing ourselves. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's, yeah, it's like uh, learning. Learning is, do it, does the, the, the same uh, motive. You always go back to what you learn, but just to make it more deeper. And, and I think mm. it's the same, same thing about uh, writing and creating and directing. Mm. I think so. I think we, the, I don't, I could not, see any director who doesn't always reshoot the same movie but in a different way but we all mm. all do the same movies every time i think so like writers write the same books over and over again or painters you were talking about magritte he always painted that came same kind of uh, 
phantasmagoric realm he had in his mind. Uh, so I guess we creators just always do the same thing, but just turning it a different way and um, exploring it in a different um, angle, I would say. I see. I see. So you, you said that we have got some inner thoughts and some kind of spirits like in, in machine. So we just try to find ourselves, our inner thoughts in, in our body. So yeah. as a director, uh, as a director, so we just find a way to explain our inner thoughts to the audience. Yes. Yes, we do. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would so say so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we, we just try to find a, some kind of pattern, some kind of uh, loops or some kind of style. So, so is it possible to explain your style or your, uh, your pattern? Is it, is it easy to explain to the... Uh, well, uh, 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 yes, I, I could say that uh, there's something that's very... Um, some kind of... Uh, red line in all my movies, it's uh, this notion of uh, who who we were, who we are, on a, who we will become. It's kind of a legacy between ourselves. Like, mm. what were my dreams uh, as a child? And would I fulfill it as an adult? And or would I betray the ch child I was uh, as an adult? I, it's like um, um, it's yeah, it's it's definitely like a, a legacy be between ages of the same person, and it's always that same routine uh, coming back. Like uh, I am who I am now, but will it? Will I be the same tomorrow and the day after? Mm. I think that's uh, what are most of, of my movies are about. I think so. And uh, will, I, will, I, will I be faithful to myself and true to myself as time passes? I and see. It, and then... The answer can be yes or no. Uh, there's not a good or a bad solution one can change or one can say stay the same. It's just a, a matter of point of view. It depends on what makes you the most fulfilled in your life. You can change and become someone totally different, but if it's okay, then it's good. Or you can stay the same or and say, I was meant to be that one and, and I wouldn't change. I, I think that's what my movies are about. I think so. I, I... There's a, there's a one proverb, I think uh, Heraclitus said that you couldn't swim uh, in the same river. So uh, when you start a film, uh, you behave like a child and then just try to swim in this river and then try to find the flow or the flux. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just try to understand the waves, just try to understand the river and the time. And yourself also, you mean? Yeah. Is it something yeah. like this? Something like that. Yes. Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay. So uh, uh, I'd like to ask some question uh, because uh, our students just wrote this question in order to ask to you. Uh, one of them, uh, for example, this is a student question, by the way. Uh, in the train scene of the movie, Low Me If You Dare, the girl in the red dress standing on the train shelves and the man in the white suit were quite impressive. In this sense, can we say that you like to use colors as metaphors in your films? She wrote here. Yes, yes. Uh, I mean, uh, visuals are very key in my work. I, I, I work a lot on visuals, I, I draw storyboards myself. Most of the time I do uh, mood boards uh, with paintings and illustrations of what I have in my mind. And I try to bring them to the screen 
in, in by any means. Uh, so yes, colors are very important in my movies, and they become more and more important as I grow as a director. Like I just completed the, the, the shooting of a of a movie set during the First World War, and basically you cannot find any other color in the movie than a very specific kind of blue and a very specific kind of gold. Uh, and that meant a world to me, to have these two colors and nothing else but these two colors during the whole movie. Uh, but in the case of Love Me If You Dare, it, it was really important for me to have these kind of contrasts uh, between the very vivid, bright red that blows over mm -hmm. the movie and Yes, why it was important, but it was more a, a kind of a yellowish green that were like um, a global wash over the, 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 the frames. Beside each period of time, you, as you noticed in the movie, uh, there are four main chapters. And I wanted the first, very first one to be very bright with vivid colors. And then as the story goes uh, down, the, the colors vanishes and almost we almost end with uh, black and white colors or like so so desaturated colors by, by the end and because it, it it's it's an allegory of this uh, destiny of these two characters uh, who, who find themselves in um, in a past they could not escape from uh, basically because when i wrote this story uh, uh, I was uh, adapting the um, the pattern of the ancient ancient Greek tragedy mm -hmm. to to the the the, the to um, rom com kind of movie. It was mm -hmm. like a, a, a shock between these two genres. Uh, like in, in the Greek tragedy, uh, the, the the characters are bound to their destinies. They have many occasions to escape from it, but they never make the choice to escape mm. from their destinies. They decide, I will go till the end, until my death. And that the key of romanticism, because romanticism is putting any cause higher than your own life, uh, on a higher level than your own life. Uh, so when I, I decided that those, these two characters were uh, trapped into their destinies, like heroes uh -huh. from the, 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 the ancient times, uh, then everything around them had to go that same direction on getting narrower and narrower as the movie would, uh, would progress. So at the beginning, they have all the possibilities. It's, you, have to, you want green, you want purple, you want red, you want yellow, you've got it. But as the movie goes on, all those colors tend to disappear just to give to 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 stay with the 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 the, the colors of this tin box uh, which is uh, which are yellow and red and uh, yeah that's a that means a lot that's a very interesting question besides uh, when I, I when i'm preparing and even writing a movie uh i know i i know, know I've, I've got a specific range of colors um um, th that sticks to to to, to the story, uh, and I try to 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 get myself surrounded. I mean, physically surrounded, like in my office uh, or even uh, uh, a shirt I could wear that could be that kind of color, so that I, I, I'm in um, in this the mood, the global mood of what I feel the movie needs. I mean, myself as a creator. I hope that answers the questions. And yes, thank you, thank you, we appreciate it. Okay, so uh, you said that, uh, for example, narrowing, narrowing something. Uh, in, in essay writing, uh, always they said that narrowing the topic. So in cinema, we are using some elements, for example, some lights, colors, and uh, other kind of cinematographical uh, elements things mm -hmm. uh, and especially Gilles Deleuze said that the most important uh, point one of them is moment the other one is time so 
which one is more important? Uh, color, movement, time, uh, or the role acting? Uh, there are so many, so many me, parameters. I think, I think the most important thing, thing in a movie is sound. I mean, to me, a movie is 90% of sound and 10% of frames. Uh, because frames bring the, the, the vista and the, 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 the great visions. And, you can, and, and it's so easy today to make great visions. It's quite uh, so simple because we've got very good cameras, very good material, and you, you can enhance all, all of it during the post. It's quite easy to make spectacular frames uh, as long as you shot it the right way and shaped, shaped it the right way to begin with. But sound brings emotions and, um, and uh, telling a story is nothing but giving emotions to, to the audience. The sound is mm -hmm. what makes you feel the way the director wants, wants you to feel. And um, mm -hmm. if he wants to make you sad, then it's sound that will make you sad. It's not the frame. If he wants to make you laugh, it's a sound that will make you laugh. And with the sound came the rhythm as well, because sound is a rhythm as well. And uh, I mean, it, it goes in all the directions of sound. It's a quality of acting. It's the sound design, obviously, uh, all the sound effects, the music, and uh, the mix, and uh, all this kind of thing. And I spend most of my time uh, as a director caring about sound uh, more than frames. I mean, frame, maybe it's because it's uh, something that I worked so much. I, feel, I find it easy to make nice or efficient frames. I think it's quite more difficult and um, it, it needs a lot of work to create, to, to do great and efficient sounds. I see. So th there's a one term also in industry, especially Pascal Bonitzer use in, uh, in his books. He said that uh, of screen space, uh, so uh, out of the frame, there are some sounds and we, as a uh, actor or as a uh, actress, uh, we always look other kind of place of your screen. And this is, as you know, closure effect. And this, we just hearing this some strange sound. So off screen sound, off screen space is also important for your yeah. films and for your mm -hmm. Uh, yes. so, uh, and you, yeah. you, you, you can go into a theater, you, you can have a very poor f um, frames or images, and you can have a uh, old um, kind of uh, it could be very dark, you could not see it, it's it's blurry, but it doesn't matter as long as you can hear what the actors want to give you. But the reverse doesn't work. You get, you, if you, you've got beautiful frames and beautiful shooting, but a very poor sound, you will never get into the movie. Yep. Uh, I think there's a one question, one student question. It is written here, in your own way, how can we relate sound and color with being impressive? It is written as a question. Uh, say it again. Uh, in your own way, how can we relate sounds and color with being impressive? The question. Color with being impressive. Wow. Uh, wow. Well, it, it's there's no there's no correct answer to, to that one. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid so. It all depends on what the scene is about. Uh, you've got to, 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 to aim straight at the art of what this scene means to you and why you, who you want to, 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 to shoot it and to show it to the audience. Uh, my 
motto is when I wake up in, in the morning and I writing or directing, I, I want to say to myself, today I'm going to shoot the best scene ever of my whole career. And every morning I've got to be so excited about what I'm about to do that I know this is this scene is going to be amazing. And if I wake up one morning saying, oh, well, I've got to do this scene, but maybe the next day yeah, it will be better than this scene has no reason to be in the movie. And so I guess um, then when you feel the scene, it's either the actors or the dialogues or the frames or the sound, all depending on what the scene is about. I cannot give a global answer to 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 that one. I don't know. It's, it depends. It depends on so many different things. So yeah, you are right. Absolutely. <laughs> That's Absolutely. Right. Answer the, the question. <laughs> And also that they, as you know, uh, they created uh, some video, some some new uh, apparatus, some new uh, device in 1960s. So from uh, 1960s, we are using, we have been using some uh, device, as you know, uh, for example, this is our uh, smartphone video. And also yeah. in, in our movie, we are using video. And for example, Jean-Luc Godard use video and and also uh, the cinema language is changing so uh, i'd like to ask a question uh, today as you know we are using some virtual production and also uh, especially in hollywood uh, production seems some virtual production because they use green box video and also they use uh, some uh, different engine game engines uh, especially in cinema industry yeah. uh, so, in fact, we are uh, trying to produce some traditional uh, films. So, if we compare the visual production and traditional production, what should we say or what can we say about... I think it's always them. a good thing to have, to have uh, newcomers and new ideas coming into an art. It's, it's uh, intertwined. Uh, I mean, what, what does the virtual... Uh, uh, industry does uh, helps a lot the, the traditional kind of mm, filming and you can see it in most of the, the movie that uh, happens today they are very different from what they were like even 10 years ago or five years ago I mean it, they get in inserted in, 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 into, into the, uh, the traditional way of filming. And we've got plenty of new gadgets to make amazing images today. And uh, I, I use some of them uh, quite a lot. I, I mean, like on, on this uh, first World War movie I was shooting, I just uh, used like sometimes five different uh, cameras and sometimes like tiny ones like this that were hooked to a, a tank or a gun or something like that to just make original new frames. And I think it can always be very instructive to watch all this kind of virtual kind of filming. It's, uh, it brings a lot and it blow, blows your, your mind as a director. It really helps you to... to uh, and sometimes I say, wow, finally someone did what, what, what I had in mind for years and I couldn't, I couldn't guess how how to do it, but no, I, I know it's possible. Uh, it really, I, I really enjoyed new ways of filming. I think it's very interesting. I see. New so ways of are some... and even, even telling stories are different today. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely. But uh, in fact, we are living like uh, old human. We, we just show the same <laughs> reaction. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> There are some questions, some student questions, and these are related to pre-production, principal photography, and post-production question. And these are, for example, what strategy do you employ for building an efficient crew? Oh. And, and uh, what? Efficient crew. Well, yeah. Uh, now I know quite a lot of 
technicians. So it's really easier for me today rather than when I started. But when I started, I was uh, the fresh man in the industry. I didn't knew m many people, obviously. So um, I, I, I made short movies quite a lot, but it's not the same to to have a, a long feature movie to, to be shot. Uh, uh, it's quite different from shooting three days in a row with, with friends. Uh, so I guess my producers were very eager to make me meet very renowned technicians, DOPs and uh, sound operators and people like that. And uh, in the end, what was very important to me and not to them uh, was a uh, relationship. I mean, I wanted to be surrounded by people who I respected as human being and with whom I could have fun on set because it's all about having fun. I mean, um, especially making a, a feature film. Uh, even now, uh, I can spend like two years, maybe sometimes four years before I have the idea till the moment I shoot it. So it's so precious, th these few moments you have on set, you don't want to spoil it with people you don't want to see on a daily basis. You just want to have the most peaceful and friendly surrounding you could have uh, so that you can freely th think about your movie and not being worried about what will they think, will they understand me, will they follow me, will they just be just friends or people I want to 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 see afterwards. I mean it's that's very I think that's the most important thing. Because in the end a DOP and an is equal to, to to the next one. Any tech technician can be replaced by the, the next one. What makes a difference to me is the connection, the, the, the human link between people. I see. All right. Uh, I just wonder that the first, you have got idea and then you want to implement, you want to create something. And the first step, uh, are you going to find a producer or? Uh, yes, it's not, it doesn't always happen this way. Uh, sometimes producers come to me with ideas and they explain it to me. I say, well, I don't feel at all like I can do this kind of movie or yes, let's me, let me think about it and explore it. Sometimes this happens and sometimes I've got the idea. And, uh, but I need to make sure that this, uh, wish I have to, to, to make this movie will last for the next couple of years because I know I won't be shooting it before a year or at least or maybe two or three years. So I've got to make sure that this desire I have is strong enough to make me, to fill me with this kind of strength. Uh, I will need to, to make this movie for this very mm -hmm. long period of time. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's like running a marathon, making a movie. And that, I mean, like uh, from the, the first ID till it, it comes to the audience. It, it sometimes, yeah, I mean, I've never made a movie that was made for less than, uh, I mean, at least a year or maybe two years. That's, that's it happens to me once that the movie just took a year before I started and then it was completed. It's just once in 12 uh -huh. movies. Uh, but most of the time it's at least two or three years. So you've got to, 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 to keep this kind of uh, stamina to, to make you run all the way along from uh, one, two, three, four years and then still feel, uh, have the face of doing a great movie in the end. I see. So, uh, but in yes, fact, sometimes, so sometimes it comes from me. Sometimes it comes from a producer. Sometimes it comes from a meeting between me and a producer. Uh, 
depending if it's depending on on, on me i think so basically de depending on my my desire to 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 make a movie because sometimes i i, I just write movies and i think okay yeah I, this is a great movie but then I, I i leave it for a couple of months and then i read it back and i say yeah well this this is an okay movie but it's not a movie i would would be proud to 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 direct so I, i forget it and jump to the next one i see so when we think about a novice director or at a beginner so what what is the first step so for example uh, i've been trying to shoot a long future film approximately 20 years but i couldn't find i couldn't create enough budget uh, yeah. for this reason uh, always uh, i'm just shooting short films so how can we enter this future film industry or how can we get involved um i don't know uh it's some kind of alchemy between uh it's always an alchemy between peoples and and uh and the subject of the movie i think some movies happen to be to be ready at the right time at the right moment and meet the right people i mean that's come it has a lot to do with luck i think so and i i i i I know that my first movie was a phenomenal um, moment of luck in my life because I happened to send it to send my script to the right guy at the precise right moment, but but I didn't know it, and I know that if I had sent this script like a week later, the guy was gone and would never have read it. And uh, the guy was my producer, and uh, he was shooting a movie in Vietnam, and he was back in France for just one week. I didn't know it when I sent it, when I sent my script to to him. But it happened to these two. They crossed. I mean, they they really met at the right moment. He read it, called me, saying, "Okay, we're going to do this movie," and then he went back to Vietnam for something like three or four months and when he came back he said okay so we discussed about this movie four months ago let's start discussing further further away and bring it to, to to life i think it has a lot to do with with luck uh definitely you need to have a producer who's very involved and not just uh not just a, a producer who makes a lot of movies but really care about it and this producer usually comes with a distributor which is very key today to make a movie happen because you can have a movie but if it doesn't come to the theater then it's useless and you just spend uh, years uh, working for nothing um, but i think each each country is different i mean in in france we're very uh, tv dependent It has a lot to do with TV. Uh, cinema is uh, linked to TV. Uh, if you've got like uh, Canal Plus or uh, TF1 or uh, Arte uh, as a co-producer, then you've got like 80% of chance of that your film will be will happen in the end. If you don't have any TV in your in your global finance plan, uh, mm -hmm. then you. you, you It won't happen. It has a lot to do with uh, TVs because TVs need need these movies to fulfill their greed, and uh, they finance cinema. Uh, so, but if you, you have, have it, the producers are a bit um, touchy, saying, "Wow, uh, will I make m money on it?" And it's it all, all come back to a matter of money. I mean, those guys are some of them are real creator they really want to be involved in the create, creation process but most of them just want to 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 make their living on 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 the cinema industry and they just worried about spending a penny on a, or a euro on a project that would not be worth 
spending money on it. Yeah, unfortunately in Turkey uh, nowadays uh, it is hard to find a good, uh, in fact, efficient money or budget for your film. Yeah, uh, yeah uh, so it is hard for uh, our student and also for uh, yeah. filmmakers. All right. So I'd like to ask uh, another question. So do you know, for example, uh, Turkish cinema or do you have any idea about Turkish or Turkey or what do you think about I, I've us? never went, never came to, to Turkey. I, I, I almost did, but uh, I had a personal uh, issue that uh, prevented me from coming. I was very disappointed. Uh, what I know about Turkish cinema is what we have in cinemas in France. Uh, I could obviously tell you about those movies I really enjoyed, like, I don't know what the title in Turkish, but Winter Sleep or Mustang or those kind of movies that are very excellent movies. Uh, uh, but I don't know what the, 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 the most of the the, the um, average movies in Turkey are because they don't come to us. They don't often come to us. I know that you had a great, great, very powerful industry in the 60s, 70s, uh, like uh, something like... Uh, yep, you're right. Yeah, the world in the more most movies, we, we, I think so. We call it Yeshilcham, like Hollywood. Yes, we, we, we said that green, Greenwood, something like this. Yep, you're right. In 1980s, you know in 1980s. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that today it's more, my feel about it is that you are more into the author kind of movies because of the lack of budget, I think so, basically. Am I wrong? Mm -hmm. It's like more, it's lower budget than it could be, uh, but like most of the, 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 the movies in the world. As a matter of fact, except uh, mm -hmm. USA and some uh, some other people, I think so. Okay, so another question comes from another student. Uh, are there any cinematic moments that you take as an example and follow that you use in your films? For example, French New Wave, Expressionism, etc. All of them. <laughs> all of them. I, 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 I really love all, all kind of cinemas. Um, I wouldn't say um, movements. I would say movies. Uh, oh. yeah. uh, uh, I think so. I mean, uh, s some of some movies are really important in my director's uh, imagination and some of them are important for such specific movies uh, I direct like for instance uh, I, I said it many times on many occasions but love me if you dare don't you uh, when I wrote it uh, I wanted to make uh, Mary Poppins meets Fight Club that was my two references. Um, I see. <laughs> well, which is pretty, sounds like a UFO in the end, but uh, it's not Mary Poppins, it's not Fight Club, it's in the end, Je d'enfant, which is something different. But that were my two poles of uh, thoughts when I was writing and directing it. I knew I was, mm -hmm. was not doing any of these two movies, uh, but I wanted to be pr proud of this of this movie as I would proud of having directed one of these two movies. I see. In one of Jean-Luc Godard films, I've seen uh, some uh, sequence. Uh, I've seen uh, Matrix, uh, Wachowski Brothers film Matrix poster. Uh, and uh, yeah. in a sarcastic, in an ironic way, Godard said that this is the film and this is my film. It just says something like this. 
So, uh, have you watched, by the way, the metrics, metrics for, or well, what do you think about uh, this? If you compare Godard's films and if you compare the Hollywood's production. <laughs> well, Godard is a very funny guy. I really love what he says and think about cinema. It's very interesting. Like he said, there was this, at some point, this. Uh, debate about who he created cinema and USA said it's Thomas Edison obviously because it's American and he's a great inventor and Godard said no it's uh, the Lumière bro brothers who created it and they say why and he said because you need to be two to make movies one before the camera one behind the camera Thomas Edison <laughs> couldn't do that on his own and that's Obvious, I mean, um, but um, what do I think about, um, what, sorry, what was uh, the first question? Uh, what do I think about? Um, if you sorry. compare, for example, if you compare the uh, Godard style or French style or maybe traditional style with the, the uh, Wachowski brothers or something like this, ah, like yes. Hollywood production, yeah. Uh, it's so different. I, I, I love both. I really love both. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, I saw the very last chapter of uh, Matrix, which I think was very lame and disappointing and uh, had nothing to do with the, the rest of the trilogy. Uh, but anyway, they had to do it because Warner Brothers asked them to, 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 to do it. So they made it, but as a as a joke, I guess so. Um, and Godard is, like I said before, he's in his spiral kind of uh, work, always reshooting the same movie, but in a different uh, way. And it, he's, he's very creative. He's very creative because he made... I don't know how many movies, like something like 40 or something like that. And it's always it's, very interesting, yeah. sometimes boring, but some always interesting. And it's, uh, it's, it's, a uh, it's a thinker. He's a, he's really a, 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 a mastermind about, uh, uh, what cinema should be about. I, I, I don't know if he's always a great director. Sometimes he is, sometimes he's not. He's just a, a, some kind of a philosopher with a camera. Uh, yeah. But it's interesting. It's always interesting. I think so. Where blockbusters are not always interesting. Yeah. It can be spectacular, but not very interesting in the end. And the, sometimes you've got really the feeling that you've seen it like... Oh yeah, I've seen that one on that one again on this one. Oh yes, I saw it again. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not very new. Uh, it's I think it's very hard to make uh, an interesting blockbuster. Uh, mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that it doesn't work because the audience always want to see superheroes and, um, and things like that. And I watch some of them a lot. Um, but in the end, does it feed you? Does it bring you any thought? Does it elevate you? Does it open something in you that that wasn't there before? I'm not sure. Some of them do, some, but most of them don't. Where those kind of creative, intimate movies like Godard do always bring you food to your brain and to your heart in the end. Uh, she said that, are you memorized or events your source of inspiration? Are you memorized or events? Do you memorize your events yes, or? Yes, I get it. Uh, some of them are, uh, not directly. I never, I never put on script uh, my real memories, but moods and stuff like that or things that look alike uh, I, I don't use my own life as a as a pattern to to to, to shape my 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 scripts but in the end since it comes from me it's a way of telling my story definitely uh, like um, the most um, 
obvious example is the, this tin box in Jeu d'Enfant uh, that is directly uh, inspired from a tin box that my mother brought me back from London on one of her trips. Uh, and it's this kind of carousel, uh, kind of wrong box. And when I was writing uh, Love Me If You Dare, I, I needed an iconic element that was a physical thing that would be the symbol of the, the love between the two, two heroes. And I, mm -hmm. I went back to my own story and said, okay, what, what could be the, the kind of element? Uh, uh, and I came with this uh, tin box. Beside the mm -hmm. tin box is the symbol of uh, travel that always come back to the same place. You never mm -hmm. go anywhere with a, with a carousel. You always start here and end up the same place. So it, it gives you the impression that you're traveling, but you're not, which is exactly what I told to start with, with this uh, idea of uh, Greek ancient tragedy and those characters mm -hmm. who think they are traveling, but won't escape from their destiny. They know where they are and they are going there. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's the symbol of it. So those kind of elements could happen, uh, some kind of, um, I don't know, elements, but not literally scenes from my own life or my memories. All right, okay. So uh, finally, uh, I'd like to ask a question about what would you like to add and what would you recommend to our fellow students? <laughs> Believe in yourselves. <laughs> <That's a point. laughs> <laughs> uh, I would say uh, uh, be proud and be happy of what you do and that what you have to tell no one else but you can tell it so you've got a place mm -hmm. you, you, everyone got a place I mean all the movie cannot happen so, or, or at least some of them will come to the screen in the end but uh, um, I think I was a bit stunborn when I started. I never, ever doubted that I would become a director in the end. So that really helped me just to make the right choice. Each time I had to make a choice between going to, to the movie or buying food. I was going to the movie and not eating. Uh, <laughs> that sounds stupid, but that was um, my decision because I knew I could live without eating for a couple of days. I knew I could not live without films for a couple of days. Uh, so just being very stunned and very, very happy and never doubt about it. I've got every day on set, I have this mantra. It was a, a, said by the Dalai Lama. He said, if the problem mm -hmm. has a solutions, then don't worry. And if the problem doesn't have a solution, worrying won't he help it, won't change anything. So mm -hmm. worrying is just a bad energy to, to ring, to, turned ag against yourself. Just think positive. Mm. Think that in the end, that's it, exactly. In the end, it's, uh, in the end, um, there will be movies on screens in a couple of years or next year. Mm -hmm. Among those movies, there will be my movie. That's it. Mm. <laughs> no doubt about <laughs> it. They, I think that's, it sounds quite easy, but it's not because it's really, it's really a matter of believing and making the right sacrifices uh, in your own life. I think all passions need, need to be, need some sacrifices to, 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 to happen in the end. I think so. Okay. I don't know if it's, it's a good advice. It's the way. I'm yeah, going. good, very, very good. Because to try, to try to be yourself. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Jan, uh, thank you very much, uh, especially accepting our interview offer. We appreciate well, it. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, and thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Uh, cool. Uh, if one day, if you want to visit Turkey, uh, please buzz us and then we will uh, see in Istanbul, hopefully. I would love to do that. I'm very, very busy these days. But as soon as I travel again, I, 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 will, come, I will come, I promise. Thank you. All right. Okay. We love you and we love your films. Thank you very much again. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Okay. Do you want to add or do you want to say something, the last word or vocabulary? The last word. Wow. Last word. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's tough questions. Um, Okay, I, I will tell you how I decided to become a director. Why? On why I decided to become a director. I knew that I was turning on this matter for a certain sort of time, but then when I was 14, uh, uh, I went to see uh, the second chapter of the Star Wars saga, which was uh, The Empire Strikes Back at the time. Uh, and um, I was so excited because at the time there was no not that many movies that had sequels and stuff like that. Uh, um, so I sat in the room, I watched this amazing visual with this ice planet, this cloud in the city, Yoda, and uh, all this kind of this asteroid chase. Uh, it was crazy. But then after a time, I, I, I realized that I was not watching the screen but watching the audience around me and they were all doing like wow at the same time or laughing at the same Han Solo's jokes on all lines and and good doing Phew! each time it was like uh, surprising and I said to myself I want to be the guy who makes these people react all together uh, and I remember clearly I was 14 I said I want to be the guy who's able to do that. And um, I think that's what keeps me hoping and making new films. It's I like to bring people in my head in a way. I think so. And in my heart. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And also, I'd like to thank uh, Baykent uh, Cinema Club, Baykent University, and Dean of Students. Thank you. Thank you very much again. Thank you. All right. All right. Hopefully, we will see each other again. All right. Yes, we will. Bye. Thank you.